Transpiration, Part One. The sun heats up the water in puddles, rivers, lakes, and even oceans. As water gets warmer, it begins to evaporate into the air as water vapor. Trees and plants too give off water vapor from their leaves through the process known as transpiration. The loss of water in the form of vapor from the aerial parts of plants is known as transpiration. It is one of the most vital phenomena in plants. Transpiration can be easily demonstrated in a laboratory. Take a well-watered potted plant. Cover the soil surface properly with a sheet of oil paper. Then place the plant in a bell jar and keep it as it is for some time. Observe the bell jar. You will notice water droplets on its inner surface. This water has come from the aerial parts of the plant due to transpiration. Three types of transpiration have been recognized. Cuticular transpiration, lenticular transpiration and stomatal transpiration. Loss of water from the surfaces of epidermal cells of leaves and herbaceous stems is said to be cuticular transpiration. Since surfaces of epidermal cells are often covered with a cutin layer called the cuticle, such a transpiration is called cuticular transpiration. Cuticular transpiration accounts for up to 10% of the total water loss by the plant. Water loss through lenticels present in woody stems is called lenticular transpiration. Due to the limited distribution of lenticels, lenticular transpiration accounts for less than 1% of the total water loss by the plant. Loss of water vapor through the stomata is known as stomatal transpiration. About 80 to 90% of the total transpiration by the plant occurs through the stomata. Stomata are minute pores in the epidermal layer of the aerial parts of plants. They are most abundant on leaves. A stoma is surrounded by two specialized epidermal cells called guard cells. The guard cells are usually kidney or bean shaped with thick inner walls. Unlike other epidermal cells, Guard cells contain chloroplasts and carry on photosynthesis. The size and shape of the stomatal aperture varies with the turgidity and shape of the guard cells. The number of stomata ranges from a few thousand to over a hundred thousand per centimeter square area of the leaf and they occupy one to three percent of the total leaf area. When the stomata are open, there is an easy diffusion of water. The mesophyll cells lining the substomatal cavity are in direct contact with the air and water is lost from their surfaces. Based on the time of the stomatal opening, stomatal movement is of two types, photoactive movement and scotoactive movement. The photoactive movement is controlled directly or indirectly by light, while the scotoactive movement is not controlled by light. In photoactive plants, the stomata open by day, whereas in scotoactive plants, they open at night. Only a few plants like cam plants show scotoactive stomatal movements. Stomatal transpiration occurs only when the stomata are fully open. It increases rapidly with the increase in the size of the stomatal aperture. The opening of stomata is governed by the changes in the turgor of the guard cells and the epidermal cells adjacent to the guard cells. Osmotic changes in the guard cells cause water to move in or out of the guard cells. When water moves in, the guard cells become turgid and the stoma opens and when water moves out of the cell, it becomes flaccid, which results in the closing of the stoma. Due to an increase in the osmotic contents, that is, the sugar content of the guard cells, 
the diffusion potential deficit, or DPD, gradient develops between the guard cells and the neighboring cells. This causes diffusion of water into the guard cells, causing them to expand and become more turgid. A decrease in the osmotic contents of the guard cells develops a DPD gradient in the opposite direction. This causes the diffusion of water out of the guard cells into the neighboring cells, making the guard cells flaccid. There are two main theories put forward to explain the changes in the osmotic pressure of the guard cells. Starch sugar interconversion theory, an active potassium ion transport mechanism. Let's take a look at starch sugar interconversion theory. The stomata open in light and close in darkness. This is due to enzymatic conversions of starch into sugar in light. The soluble sugar, which is glucose 1-phosphate, is formed as starch plus inorganic phosphates in the presence of light produce glucose 1-phosphate, while in darkness, in the presence of phosphorylase enzyme, glucose 1-phosphate is converted back into starch and inorganic phosphate. The conversion of starch into soluble sugars increases the osmotic concentration in the guard cells. As a result, guard cells absorb more water from the neighboring mesophyll cells. The turgor of the guard cells thus increases, resulting into the opening of the stomata. In the dark, sugar is transformed into starch and the whole process is reversed, leading to the closure of the stomata. Sayeri, in 1926, further elaborated this hypothesis. According to him, a change in pH affects the opening and closing of the stomata. Light increases the hydrogen ion concentration and darkness lowers it. When pH is high, the enzymatic conversion of starch to sugar is favored and at a low pH, there is a reverse process and starch synthesis takes place. It has also been suggested that the increased pH may be due to the consumption of CO2 in photosynthesis. Scarf, in 1932, supported Sayeri's view. He explained that CO2, released by the process of respiration, is exhausted in the process of photosynthesis by day, raising the pH value of guard cells. High pH favors opening of the stomata. At night, CO2 released by respiration is not utilized in photosynthesis and thus gets accumulated and dissolved in the guard cell sap, forming carbonic acid, resulting in a drop in the pH. Low pH favors closing of the stomata. Stewart, in 1964, considered that ATP is essential for providing energy for opening and closing of the stomata. According to him, glucose 1-phosphate cannot chain osmotic pressure to such an extent which can induce the stomata to open. According to Stewart, in light, glucose 1-phosphate is further converted into glucose 6-phosphate and then into glucose and inorganic phosphate. The glucose and phosphates get dissolved in the cell sap and lead to the enhancement of osmotic pressure, thereby DPD of the guard cells. Water is then influxed into the guard cells from nearby cells. Guard cells become turgid, causing opening of the stomata. At night, photosynthesis stops and the level of CO2 is high in substomatal cavity which results in the lowering of pH of guard cells. Glucose molecules are then converted into glucose 1-phosphate by utilizing respiratory ATP. The glucose 1-phosphate is then converted into starch. Since starch is insoluble in water, 
the concentration of cell sap is decreased. Therefore, DPD of the cell sap also decreases, causing outflux of water from guard cells to nearby surrounding cells. It leads to the closure of the stomata by night. Japanese scientists S. Imamura and M. Fujino in 1959 and 1967 put forward active potassium ion transport mechanism for opening and closing of the stomata. According to this theory, the accumulation of potassium ions in the guard cells, which occurs in light, increases negatively the osmotic potential of the guard cells, which causes opening of the stomata. In the dark, potassium ions move out of the guard cells and their osmotic potential becomes less negative. Thus, water osmoses out of the guard cells and the turgidity decreases. This causes stomatal closure. When the leaf is exposed to light, malic acid appears in the guard cells. This malic acid is then disassociated into malate and hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions thus produced are then exchanged with potassium ions. That is, as hydrogen ions leave and potassium ions enter the guard cells. Then the potassium ions join with the malate to form potassium malate. In the presence of potassium malate, water from the adjoining epidermal cells enters the guard cells. This results in the increase of turgor pressure of the guard cells, causing opening of the stomata.